Before turning our attention to how sets of trajectories can be used to perform multi-object tracking, I'd like to point out a few minor differences that arise when we consider random finite sets of trajectories instead of random finite sets of object states. Understanding these differences is useful to make sense of what I'll explain later. One aspect that we learned about when we studied random finite sets was integrals. In those videos, we assumed that the elements were vectors in a Euclidean space, whereas the elements are now trajectories. To define an integral over sets of trajectories, we first need to define an integral over a single trajectory. For technical reasons, we only consider trajectories of finite length, say up to some time t. But note that we can set t to be some ridiculously large number, and in practice you don't ever need to select a value for t, as long as your functions are zero for sufficiently long trajectories. To compute the integral over a trajectory with sum over all possible trajectories within the time interval that we are considering. This is a straightforward extension of the integrals that we have seen previously. For the continuous variables, the summation is an integral. For the integral valued variables, beta and epsilon, we instead have a discrete summation over all values that they can take, where we note that both must be positive and that epsilon cannot be smaller than beta. Also note that the dimensionality of the vector x beta to epsilon depends on beta and epsilon. More importantly, please note that the entire integral is simply summation over all trajectories. Given the above definition, the set integral is defined as before, but where the inner integrals are defined over trajectories and include summations over beta and epsilon. That is, to compute the set integral of a function f that depends on a set of trajectories with sum over all possible cardinalities i from 0 to infinity of 1 over i factorial times the integral over f of i trajectories. Again, the bottom line here is that integrals are defined analogously to before. Conceptually, we perform filtering in the same manner as before. The state variable that represents the set of trajectories and the set of measurements boldface zk are both random finite sets. As before, we can perform prediction using the chapman kolmogorov equation and the update step using Bayes' rule. Apart from the fact that the set of objects have been replaced by the set of trajectories, nothing else has changed. The fact that we use sets of trajectories to perform multi-object tracking does not change our models of the world. For instance, if we believe that the standard models are accurate, those are the models that we will use. However, we still need to be able to express the models in terms of sets of trajectories. For the measurement model, we recall that the measurements at time k only depend on the set of objects at time k. To express the measurement model in terms of sets of trajectories, we introduce a function tau k that extracts the set of objects at time k from the set of trajectories. It then follows that the distribution of zk given the set of trajectories is equal to the distribution of zk given that the set of objects xk is tau k of capital xk. This means that as long as we have a model for the measurements given the set of objects, we directly obtain a model for measurements given the set of trajectories. As before, we assume that objects appear, stay within the area of interest for some time, and then disappear, and we can model this as before. To obtain a motion model, we simply need to express the model in terms of trajectories. First of all, if an object appears at time k, the variables beta and epsilon in its trajectory capital XK are both k. Second, an object which is present at time k minus one may survive until time k. If the object is present at time k minus one, its value for epsilon at time k minus one must be k minus one. And for a surviving object, epsilon then takes the value k at time k. Also, if the object survives, the trajectory is longer at time k than at time k minus one, and the sequence has been extended by a vector xk. Finally, objects may disappear between time k minus one and k. If we are trying to estimate the trajectories of all objects that have ever been present, the trajectory capital xk minus one that ended at time k minus one will appear in all future sets of trajectories, capital boldface xk, xk plus one, and so on. And since the trajectory has ended, it will never change again. 
Another possibility is that we are only estimating the trajectories of all objects that are present at time k. In that case, all trajectories that end are removed from the set of trajectories and will be ignored from then on. I would like to end this video with something quite interesting, namely a brief description of the Bernoulli and Poisson random finite sets in the context of sets of trajectories. As usual, a Bernoulli random finite set contains at most one element. We refer to its distribution as a multi-trajectory PDF, and it takes the value zero if the set contains more than one element, it takes the value one minus r if the set is empty, and it takes the value r times px of x, where x is not boldface, if the set boldface contains a single element x. Note that the element capital X is a trajectory and that px therefore describes the distribution over the trajectory, given that it exists. As an example, suppose the existence probability is 0.8, and that we have this single trajectory density. This single trajectory density is such that beta always takes the value 2, and epsilon always takes the value 3. For simplicity, we also assume that the states x2 and x3 are independent Gaussian scalar random variables, with means 2 and 2.5 respectively. Generating samples from this Bernoulli random finite set, we can see that the set usually contains a single trajectory, but that the set is sometimes empty. We can also see that the trajectories that are generated start at time 2 and end at time 3. It is of course also possible to have Bernoulli random finite sets where the start and end times are random, but this toy example illustrates the basic concept of trajectory Bernoulli random finite sets. One important aspect of these Bernoulli random finite sets is that the parameter r describes the probability that the set contains a trajectory. To determine the probability that the trajectory, and thus the corresponding object, is present at a specific time t, we also need to consider the single trajectory density, px of x. For instance, in the toy example to the right, r is 0.8 but the probability that the trajectory is present at time 1 is still 0. Poisson point processes are defined in the same way as before, and the only difference is that the elements are now trajectories, which also means that the intensity function lambda is a function of single trajectories. The multi-trajectory PDF of a Poisson point process, boldface capital X, is therefore e to the power of minus lambda bar, times a product over all elements in the set, boldface capital X, of the intensity function lambda of X. For instance, suppose the intensity function is a mixture where the first component represents trajectories that start at time 1 and end at time 2, whereas the second component represents trajectories that start at time 2 and end at time 3. For simplicity, the elements in the trajectories are again assumed to be independent Gaussian scalar random variables. If we integrate over the intensity function, the first component integrates to 1, whereas the second component integrates to 0.7, which means that the expected number of elements in the set is 1.7. Looking at samples from this Poisson point process, we can see that the number of elements varies considerably. As expected, we also obtain some trajectories that start at time 1 and end at time 2, and some trajectories that start at time 2 and end at time 3. Naturally, since capital boldface X is a Poisson point process, its cardinality is Poisson distributed, whereas we obtain the distribution over single trajectories by normalizing its intensity function by the Poisson rate.